And from here, you can see I have a little pulley assembly. I'm running NX, and when our software is installed, we are just another ribbon. So you can see there's 3DCS NX, and you can go to assemblies or PMI or any of the other NX functions. And when you do your tolerance analysis, you just come to our workbench. When you come to our workbench, there's going to be a DCS tree, which is associated with the NX tree. So you can see as I click through, it highlights the parts in the NX tree as well as in the CATIA or in the um, 3DCS tree. And then this is where all of our data will reside, moves, tolerances, and measures. This model, you can see, has embedded constraints. So we're going to utilize those to directly assemble this model. And if I take this base and open it into a new window, you can also see that these parts have embedded PMI. So remember, you don't have to have all this stuff embedded, but the idea is that uh, you know, as we move closer or more and more into model-based definition, we want as much data tied into the CAD as possible. And then what you're seeing here is assembly GD&T. So we're going to use that as those for our measurements. <coughs> so because we have all this embedded, I can come up here and I can say, hey, I want to extract my moves. Well, hold on a second. I gotta give my tree back. You can see how this is all empty at the moment. And if I say extract moves, parts have to be fully loaded. It created seven moves from the 18 constraints I showed you earlier. So if I come in here, now you can see I have these moves, and you can see how it's highlighting the features that were automatically picked up from the constraints. And now I can build this. I can separate it, and I can actually animate it through the assembly sequence so you can see how this is put together. Now that it's built, I have not brought in any tolerances but from the design, if I zoom in here and I hit deviate, you can see these parts are jiggling around. This is variation picked up just from the original design because the pins are smaller than the holes. So there's inherent variation in a product just from design clearances. Now if I separate this model and we look at like the base, you can see it's got some features. These were the features that are used in the moves, but there's no tolerances. So now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to extract GD&T on all the parts. And you can see it pulled in 71 GD&T callouts. So now you can see from the tree now we have all kinds of gd and I'm going to double click this. I'll do a little quick auto sort so I can mouse over and you can see on this base it's highlighting that's datum A, that hole is datum B, datum C, and if I come down here profile tolerance on that surface, profile tolerance on this surface, and so forth. So all the parts are now toleranced if I turn the mesh on, we don't deviate the physical part, so any feature that is used for a move tolerance or a measure, we will, we will create a mesh on it. So now if I come in here and I say sweep, you can see these surfaces are varying within their tolerance zone. So now my parts are toleranced, and I have my moves defined, so if I build it now, and hit deviate. 
you can see it's moving much more because now it's picking up the clearances plus the part tolerances. So now if you look, you know, we have tolerances on our parts, we have move definition, last thing we need is our measurements. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say extract measures. And I'll pick this here. And it says that it created nine measurements. We're going to look at only two measurements. But I'm also going to come up here and extract GD&T measures. That would be like this position tolerance here. So that created three measurements. So now if I come down here, at the final assembly, you can see that's my dimension distance measure, which is this 146 plus or minus 0.5, which is from the attachment of the bottom of the base to the center of the pulley. <coughs> if I do a nominal build, you can see that updates to 54 plus or minus 0.5. If I go into this measurement, there's the 54 and this is the spec limit that it pulled from here. So this is not a tolerance. This is actually a final build requirement that we're testing for. If I deviate from here, I can click on this current, and you can see that number is changing for every build. So then our goal is to understand, with our piece part tolerances and our assembly method, can we meet that 54 plus or minus 0.5. So then we're going to continue on and run an analysis. Give me one second. Okay. So now you can see this is going to list all the measurements in the model. It's giving you a summary page. And if we come down to, um, we, want, we want to look at this measurement here, dimension A to pulley center, dimension A to pulley center. You can see it highlights it on the graphics, dimension A to pulley center. And it's telling you your measurement, where your measurement's located, your nominal, your mean, and your spec limit, and your estimated range of variation. If I double click this, you can get your histogram here and your list of contributors down here. So this is telling us that, hey, we're not going to meet our goal of uh, 54 plus or minus 0.5. Here's the spec limit at 53.5 and 54.5. And we're going to fail 16.53% of the time. Then, if I separate this model, I can click on here, and it will walk you through all the tolerances that affected that gap or that distance measurement. So from here, you know, you know what is your most critical tolerance, and you know what is your least critical tolerance, and you know if any of your tolerances are amplifying. You can see this tolerance here, it's a very tiny tolerance, but it's being amplified based on how these components are locating. And so with this data, you can now start validating your design, modifying your design, tuning up your tolerances. Once you have all this data, you can go ahead and build it, And then you can come over here and you can say generate a report. From here, you can choose what you want in your report. And you can choose if you want it to be HTML, Excel, PowerPoint, or Word. So I have pre-run that report, which you get right here. And so you can see, you know, this is a cover page. Took a picture of your model, pulley assembly created by me. You got a model summary, 
This is our default summary that you can fill in to uh, define your objectives and your summary and your critical measurements. And when you get to your analysis results, again you get your data in a spreadsheet format. And if I click on mouse over, you can see it took a picture of your measurement. And if I click on it, you get a better view. So we're measuring from here to the center of the pulley. And you get your histogram with your data across the top. And we even took a picture, if I hit animate, you can see we took a picture of that pulley at its min and max position. And then if I come over here to model input, I can do walk through the assembly sequence. And you can see it took those moves and it took a picture to walk you through how this is actually built. If I go into my GD&T, you can see we got pictures of datum A, datum B, datum C. If I scroll down to, uh, um, there's a lot of GD&T on the base. If I come down here to a profile on that surface, so now you can see, you know, all the information in the model can be dumped out into a report. Excel, PowerPoint, Word, or HTML, or you can just dump out the results if that's what you want. And you obviously you can see I'm no longer inside the CAD system. I'm reviewing this model in my Google Explorer. So that's the basics. Open up your model, define moves, tolerances, and measures, run your analysis, create a report. Thank you very much for your time.